Hello. I have returned. To, to my room with no echo. It turns out it's been serendipitous this whole time. The, the, the sound quality of my videos is, is this sort of good. Because there's hardly any echo in this room. There's, a, there's like an island or a tree in space. A little bit like Britain itself. Where giant green colourless midgets sleep furiously. Oh, how I've missed you. Oh yeah, before I go on, it's time for the infamous ritual. The changing of the hat. Oh, 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 cow, 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 cow. <laughs> yeah. for, for those of you who think that was, that was the first time this has happened in the last three years, it isn't. It's the sixth time it's happened. There was a blue one, there was a red one, there was two different green ones, and then a tartan one, and then the, and then the grey one, and then now this one. And this one's black. Made from real Black Lives Matter. <laughs> I I still have the the, the Totten one. It's a dude who who pledged a thousand dollars for a hat. If you'd rather have the Totten one than the grey one, speak now or forever. Hold the grey one. All right. Sorry for the longish preamble there, but business is business, and I think this will be a short one. Fun fact. Well, you've already given us two fun facts. Carrie McCrossan. Four, if you include your first and last names. Apparently, you identify as a comedian and a vagina haver. I ha have you considered separating two of those? I'm certainly not saying you should ever have to separate your first name from your last name, Carrie McCrossan. <laughs> I think Jesus would find it pretty hilarious. But do you think you could separate those other two identities there? Because if you can... You'll find yourself head and shoulders above 90% of the other female comedians. <laughs> Do you think you could simply be a comedian? And maybe stick to being a card-carrying vagina haver in relevant situations. Like when you're shaving, showering, or schlicking. Fucking doesn't count. You can fuck with your ass. Or your face. The sky's the limit. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Women make up 51% of the world's population. Oh, that is a fun fact. I mean, by all accounts, it should be 50-50, but there are 70 million men missing in action. How did that happen? Or, 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 is, that, or is, that, is that just the way it is? <laughs> there are simple biological accounts for why men are you know, more prone to things like suicide. What the deuce? That means 51% of the world has a vagina. 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 Huh. Tell me, my dear, do you do you live in a state or province which does legally recognise the vagina as being capable of the crime of rape? Oh my! How queer! Uh, do you want to uh, do you want to know what I'm talking about? Here's one example of a comedy club in London. A London comedy club has banned ironic comments and banter with the audience to create a safe space for stand-up. But just make sure you are not a conservative, as then you risk being called a racist bigot, or <laughs> a fucking monster, or even a fucking cuntbag of a twi- <laughs> it's, it's the Daily Mail, it's, it's never short on its own layer of oblivious irony, but... But this is a true story, and frankly, it's not much of a surprise. This is what the London comedy scene is turning into. Lolitics Comedy Club, which takes place around once a month at the Black Heart pub in Camden, makes acts abide by a set of rules to create an enforced niceness. Performers are told to preserve the safe space by not asking people in the audience questions one-on-one, -on -one, while spectators must in turn not heckle the comedians. The rules also outlaw jokes that are considered sexist, racist, homophobic, transphobic, disabled, and comments like, I hate the French. Organiser Chris Coltrane adds on the Lolitics website, if I've missed any ism out, it doesn't mean it's allowed. 
Everybody call it now. Go on. What about feminism, Chris? Are you banning feminist comedians? Let me know how you get on with that. Mr. Coltrane also tells acts to consider not using the word rape, as it may be triggering to people who have suffered sexual assault. Personal comments about people's appearances, such as laughing at a politician for being overweight, are also discouraged, as is any form of, quote, dickheadish nastiness. So you see, Carrie, as a comedian, these are the kinds of words and beliefs you can expect to be banned from saying at a comedy event. I have never, in all my days and all my avenues, Carrie, seen or heard of an establishment dealing in entertainment rated above PG-13 that bans the use of the word vagina. Or pussy, or cooch, or hoo-hoo, or twinkle cave, or cunt. Well, no, well, sometimes, sometimes cunt is banned, but not when it's used about a man or a conservative. <laughs> oh, do you think I should go there? To to the fucking to to, to the safe space comedy. I haven't done a gig for fucking ages. What do you what do you guys reckon? Should should I get up there and talk graphically about violently debasing Theresa May? Yeah, <laughs> see how quickly I can make Chris Coltrane's head explode. Do you reckon I can get banned before I've even been there? Yeah, yeah. Oh, go on, Chris. Pre-ban me for life. Give me the full Cassie J treatment. I can take it. Make it hurt, <laughs> as Sam Harris would say. Oh, hey, Sam. Yeah, you know how the Southern Poverty Law Center is definitely a bunch of lemon-headed lunatics. Well, you might want to look into some of the other shit they said and then later retracted. Yeah, if my calculations are correct, no matter what the SPLC does next, I and her CLE can look forward to at least four years of I have it on good authority that she's part of a hate group. All right, where the fuck was I? Oh, Jesus. Uh. Okay. Um, it rhymes with pagina. Why not China? I mean, finer, minor... Wine or diner all rhyme with vagina, but only if you're speaking with that estuary R, typical of the urban East Coast or English post Celtic accent. But the first thing that springs to mind in any accent is surely China. I mean, you must have thought of it. Why did, why did you skip over it and land on vagina? Not a word. Does it perhaps perturb you slightly that China resembles your vagina? I have no idea where I'm going with that, but I'm pretty sure I've already gone far enough to get banned, right? Oh, all right, it's old and yellow and it spells a fish. There you go. All right, settle down. Settle down, will you? Well, I never. When did the anatomical term for a woman's reproductive organ become vulgar and taboo? Her name is Eve Ensler. As far as I know, there is there is no ban on a single mention of the word vagina, but perhaps some venues have introduced a cap at 200 mentions per minute just to skim off anyone who's thinking of doing a reading of the vagina monologues. We can't say v but we can say things like vajayj, cooch, punani, punani nani. Yes, largely because when a child hears the word vagina, their parents get offended. And by that I mean their mothers get offended. Most of them have no dads now. So we're obliged to call it something else like JJ or Cooch or Punani. And then lo and behold, another group of women gets offended by those words. And down we go, circling the drain of the euphemism vortex until there are no words left in our language. Winston. You're getting really creative. Thank you. I'll try my best. Though I must say... You're not being very creative. The, the stereotype of the female comedian is they fail to be funny or even make a salient point about anything because they're so goddamn obsessed with their vaginas. Do you see how you're not, like, fully, like, helping? All women have a vagina. <laughs> oh, really? You might want to explain that to the trans community. 
Did you just leave me? Be thankful it's not a fucking white noise machine. The human body has been flagged for indecent content. Yes. For instance, you can't do a goatsy on live television. You can't bend down in front of the camera in front of a million people eating their breakfast and crowbar your anus open like the gaping mouth of a whale shark. Certain parts of the human body have been considered generally taboo for the entire history of photography. Erect penises, for instance, are not allowed anywhere except pornography. Can you think of a word, a single word, for an erect penis? And are you allowed to say that on primetime television? Can you, e can you even say, pe you can't even say penis, can you? That's like telling firefighters they couldn't use the word fire. 911, there's red hot flamey stuff everywhere. Or like telling a surgeon that they're not allowed to call it genital mutilation. What if I was a gynecologist, but I couldn't say the word And what if an andrologist isn't allowed to- Oh shit, there are no such doctors. But gynecologists do exist, and they are very much allowed to say vagina. So what occupations are you talking about? In what occupations are you not allowed to say vagina? You've so far neglected to actually nominate one. And if it's nurses or teachers, I'm breaking out the jack. So what's next? Are we going to investigate school teachers for using the V word in their sex ed classes? In sex ed classes, yes, that would indeed be quite retarded. But if this is about the fourth grade drama teachers who won't shut the fuck up about their vaginas, that is a slightly different matter. Ban congresswoman from the house for daring to use the word v That would be insane. But both of those things have already happened, literally, in real life. Literally! You say? Might you be referring to this? And finally, Mr. Speaker, I'm flattered that you're all so interested in my vagina, but no means no. She insinuated that everybody in the house wanted to rape her. That is not an appropriate thing to say in Congress. No matter which body part integral to the rape you happen to be mentioning, or what word you use for it. Like, if a teacher said that to her students, even in a sex ed class, it would be highly inappropriate, do you see? And it was more than four years ago when that shit happened. Do you not have a fucking moratorium or something on how long you're allowed to keep lying about this shit? I promise you that if we all start saying it, we'll all treat each other as full-grown adults. You are not victimized by every goddamn thing in the world. If you, if you want to feel like a fully grown adult, try to understand that people who don't look like you also have problems. People who do not have vaginas also experience discrimination and marginalization. And it's not necessarily all the fault of other people who have no vaginas. Try not using your vagina as an excuse to abdicate your sense of agency. You'll know you're doing it right when you can at least figure out how to be funny. Wouldn't that be weird? It's very much so. People will be able to have real conversations about sexual wellness and intimacy. You will never. Be able to have a proper conversation, especially not about those things until you can train yourself to try and take an interest in something other than your vagina. Did you know there are other things? We all want healthy vaginas. Enough with the shame. Let's legalize vag- Right, well that's not how you get healthy vaginas. That's how you get a yeast infection. Legalize vag- 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 vag-
You did. Yes, headphone users, RIP you. The, <laughs> the fact that you turned your headphones up to a deafening level is someone else's fault. The, I swear, the one thing that's almost as irresponsibly high and mighty as a feminist's vagina is a sound engineer's ears. There is nothing you people won't bitch about. It's okay, we can say the word Best thing, big boy. There's bad fucking with you, man. Share this video quickly before they take it down because we've said vagina so many times. Never gonna happen. But do give the video a like or a dislike while you still can. Comments are already disabled, so ratings can't be far behind. It's just a word. It's a body part. It's not a big deal. Bossy. You've already forgotten, haven't you? What what if what if I called you a bossy vagina? Is that okay? Are those words just words? Or is only one of those words just a word? And the other word is a form of informational violence. Is that right? Is that magically fucking right? What if I called you an authoritarian pussy? Sounds like an oxymoron, doesn't it? But it's not. Authoritarians are pussies. That's why they're authoritarians. That's precisely why you would run a stand-up comedy night where you could ban anyone with political beliefs that oppose yours because you're such a spineless, pestilent bitch right, that you can't handle dissenting opinions. But here's the catch. It's a game changer of a catch, and you won't believe you haven't noticed it until now. No one identifies as authoritarian. Everyone from the worst fascists to the worst communists, they all think they are agents of freedom who are offering solace and salvation to everyone in the end, in the long run or the short run. So by all accounts, everyone should be libertarian leaning and no one belongs anywhere in the top half of the political spectrum. But that's not the case, is it? In practice, most people are in fact authoritarian. But they're fucking liars. Because in practice, they all worship at the altar of the world's most powerful church. The church of women worsting. Watch the skies. Shit's about to get deep. Deep airs, bro. Deep airs.